G'day guys, in this particular video I'm going to be covering a fairly challenging tension and pulleys example problem. Specifically, we've been asked, what forces, F1 and F2, must be applied to ensure equilibrium in this system right here? And just to spell it out for you, this green rope right here, we're pulling on with the force F2, and this pink rope we're pulling on with the force F1. And we're asked, what are the forces, F1 and F2, such that this entire thing is in equilibrium, or in other words, so nothing's accelerating? Okay, so have a shot at this yourself first, and then come back when you're done. Okay, let's get started. Now, it's not particularly easy to know where to begin with a problem like this, because we're bombarded with information. But, let me propose to you the idea of making a cut section around here, and analyzing this free body diagram outlining in red. Right? You'll understand why this is a good um, free body diagram to begin first, because we've only got one variable, the tension in this, blue f in this blue rope just here. So without any further ado, let's get analyzing. Let's draw the two pulleys I've isolated in this free body diagram, and let's draw the ropes, which I've made cut sections of just here and here. So I've made a cut here, 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 and here, and of course we've got this other blue rope just here, and this is our 500 mass included in our cut section just here, okay? And don't forget, we've also got ropes here and here. Now, because I've made cut sections along these ropes just here, that means their internal forces, i.e. the tension, will become external and will show up in our free body diagram. So let me just even show the cut sections in red right along here. And that means our tension will pop out now, one of the underlying properties we can use for tension in pulley systems is that the tension in this rope will remain constant everywhere. I've done a summary video and a proof video behind that. So that means that the tension in this rope, in this part of the 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 rope is all the same. And I'm just going to call that tension T. Okay? Now, notice that the tension force doesn't pop out of these ropes because they're internal. We haven't made cut sections along here, so they're not going to show up, okay? Now, because we've got a mass here, the force due to gravity is always an external force, so that shows up, and this is going to be a force 500, that's your mass, times it by gravity. I'll just write that as 500 G, okay? Now we're ready to apply our equilibrium equations. We know that the sum of forces is going to be equal to zero. And I'll do the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be equal to zero. That means sum of forces up equals sum of forces down. So in this case, 5t, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5t is going to be equal to 500g. And we can solve this and we can say t is going to be equal to 100g, where g is just your acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so so far we found the tension in this blue rope right? Which isn't actually what we've been asked to solve for, but you'll find it's necessary to do the rest of this problem. Okay, so now that we've evaluated that free body diagram, what do we do next? Well, I reckon this would be a good candidate to analyze this cut section, which I'm outlining in red just here. We know the tension in this blue rope. We don't know the tension in this green rope, right? So we can find it um, by, by, by using this free body diagram. Okay, so let's consider this isolated pulley, which I've made a cut section of. And let's consider this blue rope just here. We've made cut sections along here and here. And of course, we've got this green rope just here. And that is a cut section like that. Okay. Now, um, of course, we know that the tension here is going to be T and T, right? always pointing away from the rope, otherwise it would just go slack. And um, there's also going to be a tension force in this green rope. Notice because they're different ropes, they could in principle have different tensions. So I'm just going to call this tension, well I could call it T2, but I already know it's going to be a tension F2. That's because I'm pulling on this rope with a force F2, so the tension will be for everywhere in this rope the same at F2. Okay, so this is our free body diagram outlined here. Let's do the same thing. We know the sum of forces in the y direction must be equal to zero. Sum of forces up equals sum of forces down. That means that F2 must in fact be equal to 2t. And we know that F2 must be equal to 2 times 100g. That's 200 times by 9.81, which I'll just write as 200g for now. And we're almost done. Now let's see if we can find F1. 
And this isn't an easy part, by the way. It's, it's not quite obvious which particular cut section we're going to use. I reckon the easiest way to do this is to make this cut section right along here. Cut through the blue rope here, cut through the pink rope here. Now we could actually cut through this one and this one. would get the same answer, of course. But it would be simpler if we just end the cut section here, like this. Okay, so let's consider this free body diagram outlined here. Well, let's draw the um, two isolated pulleys I've cut off. And then we've got the blue rope around here. And I'm getting a little bit sloppy with my artwork. I hope you don't mind. We've got that green rope I've made a cut along here. Let's see, uh, cuts around here too, like that. And of course, we've got our pink one just here like that. And let me even draw the cut sections in red like that. Okay. So, um, as, we, as, I told, as I discussed before, the tension force in this green rope is the same everywhere and it's equal to F2. So this right here is going to have a tension F2, this is going to be F2, this is going to be F2 like this. This right here is going to be our tension force in our pink rope, which of course is F1, which of course is F1, and this right here is going to be our tension in our blue rope, which I just called T, like this. Okay, well we can analyze this using the sum of forces again. We know that because we're in static equilibrium, the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. So that means that um, sum of forces up equals sum of forces down. Uh, 3F2 is gonna be equal to 2T plus F1. We wanna solve for F1. F1 is gonna be equal to 3F2 minus 2T, and that's gonna be equal to uh, 3 times 200 minus, oh, in fact, I'll do it in two steps. It's going to be 600G minus 200G, and that's going to be equal to 400 times by gravity, and that's going to be F1. Okay, now for simplicity, I've left it in terms of G, but we don't have to. In fact, it might be more simple if I write T is going to be equal to 100 times 9.81. That's going to be 981 newtons like this. This is our complete answer just here. And F2 is gonna be equal to 200 times 9.81, and that's gonna be 1962 newtons like this. And last and not least, we have F1. And F1 is gonna be equal to 400 G, which is going to be 3924 newtons okay so in summary our answer is we need to pull down on this green rope with the force of 1962 newtons and we need to pull down on this pink rope with a force of 3924 newtons and that is the problem solved guys i hope that made sense cheers